Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today's video is a bit different from my recent uploads as today I'm going to be talking about how and why I create this piece in depth for the first time. So this piece is one of my favourite ones yet so far for a number of reasons. Firstly because I'm very proud of how it turned out but also because of the subject of this piece. I have been a Leeds fan all my life and recently, I believe this season, Leeds got promoted under Bielsa. I found a YouTube channel called the Just Joe Football Show. Since then I've been watching Joe's channel and I've always enjoyed his content as he gets more than one opinion on Leeds United performances, players, transfers and other things, not only from his perspective as a Leeds fan but also other fans that support different teams which I think is very unique in the football YouTube community. So after finishing a few side projects I reached out to Joe asking if he would like a piece of art created by me to show my appreciation towards his channel. As well as showing him a few of my recent leaked themed paintings such as my Bielsa and Rutter ones, Joe got back to me and told me he would love a painting and he gave me a rough idea of what he wanted me to do. He told me that he wanted a piece that included himself, Bielsa and Farker. I was really grateful that he got back to me and after a couple of days of planning and brainstorming ideas I got to work on his piece as you can see right now. And obviously this first part of the painting that I'm doing right now is a portrait of Joe, the first of three that I will be doing throughout this video. With all my paintings and artworks in general I always like to start on the left eye. I do this with every portrait I do because I like to start with the eye as it's the most dominant part of a portrait and it really gives the idea of how the painting is going to look. So if I make a mistake on the eye, I can go back and erase it and try again and keep trying to make it look perfect. And I also like to start on the left, I think, just because when I do traditional paintings and drawings, as I'm right-handed, when I start on the right and move to the left, I'd usually smudge what was on the right. So I think I just picked up a habit of always starting on the left. And once I've finished drawing the eye, I like to draw around it and then move on to the second eye and then do the same there. I started drawing Joe first for this painting because obviously he's the main part of this piece and he is the person that I wanted to get right most out of all three of the people I'll be drawing. So I started with him because if I could make any mistakes at least I could learn from it, erase it and start trying again and try again until I got it perfect. And I'm really happy with how it turned out as you'll see later on in the video. But for now I'm just focusing on the shadows and dark areas on Joe's face and then building it up, getting lighter and lighter towards the areas that have a lot of lighting on it and a lot of areas that have um, less shadows and less light texture to them. It's quite a tedious process doing this I would say because um, using a like, never ending colour palette really because it, every colour on Joe's face when I'm drawing it, uh, there's a lot of dark colours, a lot of light colours, there's oranges, and pinks and white and it's really hard to get them all perfect and all of them to look like the fit where I do them. So it, it, there's a lot of trial and error to it and you have to erase and try again with different colours and just try to find the one that matches your skin colour the best. And with a lot of portraits I do, we've just got to basically start with the dark areas and look at which bits will look best and if something looks out of place I just try and make it lighter and then if it still looks out of place I try and make that colour darker until it eventually fits in the portrait. And here I'm working from left to right as on the reference photo that I'm using the right hand side of Joe's face uh, has the light on it so the, the skin there is a lot lighter and the left hand side is a bit darker as there's less light reflecting from that place. So as I said, when I like to start from dark colours and when I wait to light colours, I start on the left, making sure the shadows look okay, making sure that the dark side looks okay, and then I slowly move my way to the lighter colours onto the left until I'm eventually using like almost a really, really pale pink to finish off the end of the portrait. So here, as you can see, it's already kind of coming to life and I'm filling in everywhere else and just making sure the shadows on the left are too dominant and make sure the lighting on the right isn't too dominant as well. Keeping similar colours but just turning them down a bit and turning them up when going into the lighter parts. Once 
once we get to this end part here of the right hand side of the chair's face we will start be working downwards and I'll start working towards the beard and there's, again there's a lot of light colour on uh, the side of Joe's face as we go down with here as well so again I'm just trying to continue those light colours down on the right and continue the dark colours down on the left and making sure again that they both look good and they don't look out of place and make sure each colour works well next to, to the colour that it's next to. And for this part I'm just drawing the shadows below Joe's nose and then here I am drawing the darker part of his beard working into the light. And I use a lot of colours in Joe's beard, I use greys, pinks, dark browns and everything just to give off the effects of shadows on his beard and light parts of his beard. Again just to show that the light is on the left hand side but for a beard you don't necessarily need to do that as light don't really affect beards and hair, it merely just affects skin. So here, again, I'm just drawing the darker parts of the beard and working away to the lighter parts using whatever colour I think will look best and will look most like the reference photo I'm using. And uh, yeah, it's a very tedious process doing this as well. This was probably the most challenging part of the portrait and probably the part that took the longest purely because you have to draw almost like every individual hair and just it's very difficult and you will make mistakes and you just got to keep erasing it and trying again and trying again and making sure that the beard doesn't look you know like it is blended in with the skin you've got to make it stand out a little bit as the colours are a lot darker and the beard is like a part of the face that kind of defines it. And after working a little bit on the beard I decided to move on to the ear as I didn't want to spend a lot of time on the beard because it is just very boring and like I said very tedious to do the same colours over and over just try to build up the beard. So I moved on to a small part of his ear just to take time to try and focus on the rest of this pea. And I used light colours, obviously in the parts like I said that are going to be light on that right hand side and then built it downwards so I could finish off the rest of his beard. And like I said I worked a little bit from light to dark here but then I started on the dark part of the bottom of the beard and worked up with light colours. And it was really satisfying doing this piece and I think it looks really good now when it's coming together because all them colours uh, fit so well and it does look really nice here. And um, I finished off the rest of his lips and moved down to the skin colour and then here I'm doing the dark parts of the beard all up and down just making sure that I can definitely make his look as realistic as possible and using a few light colours here and there to give off that realistic effect. As I said before though, drawing facial hair and just hair in general is very very difficult because there's a lot of random colours you're throwing everywhere and you've got to make sure that they look right otherwise it can look patchy and it can look just a really out of place. So when I was working the skin colour I made sure that I was definitely doing it as best as I could and not just drawing randomly because it would then just like I say make his beard look patchy and it wouldn't look very good. So I work on the dark areas, build them up into the lighter colours and then build that up into the skin making sure that every hair looks good and making sure that his skin colour doesn't blend in too much with the beard colours. But now here we can really see it come to life, we can see Joe's face slowly slowly getting there and um, when I'm finished off the rest of this beard now I move down onto the most challenging part of this piece which is Joe's neck tattoo. It's really hard to draw tattoos and be without them just looking like the thrown on there really, like it's hard to blend them in with the skin and make them look like real tattoos and I did struggle a lot but the main thing I learnt when doing this was to keep the colours quite dull and keep them quite similar to the skin colour but obviously just having lots of greys and dark greens and blacks and light browns and eventually when you're building up and building it up it will look like a tattoo you just got to be patient and make sure you don't rush it. I must say this drawing Joe's tattoo was actually a lot of fun because even though it was really challenging um, drawing these shapes and stuff like this is something I don't usually do so it was a nice little break from just drawing skin colour and drawing the beard to actually work on some shapes like this on his neck it was yeah like I say really refreshing to do that and I did really enjoy drawing the different shapes and colours within the tattoo and yeah we're done now with just skin colour with his head and his neck we're completely done with that now when we're moving on to his clothing but something that we did with the beard and the skin colour that we'll be doing with the clothing is going from dark to light again 
I think clothing works best using this technique as well. So on the shadows and the coat we use a really dark black as you can see down the tracksuit top and then we move it into like a light blue and then into like a greyish colour and it does work really well with clothing and I think it's the best way to do it as clothing can be quite hard to draw. As you can see here on its left arm I made a few mistakes but eventually I got this and I'm pretty happy with it. Um, it's not perfect but I'm happy with how that turned out and here we're just drawing the rest of his tracksuit top again working from a black to a kind of bluey greyish and once we get this bit done here we will be fully done with the portrait of Joe which I am very happy with. Let me know in the comments how what you think of it but after this I just move him around a little bit make sure he's perfect in the centre and we move on to Daniel Farkas portrait. And this is the first time in this video that I don't use the technique I've been talking about from the dark to light. Instead I work from light to dark because in a lot of the reference photos I was looking at of Daniel Farker, the outline of his face is like a pale pink and then um, yeah it's like the outline from his forehead like around his nose and his lips is like a pale pink but then as we move the skin and move on that nearer to the right with his skin and everything it does get a bit darker but for the nose here I did use like dark colours near the bottom of his nose and near the nostrils and then worked my way up using quite a few purples and pinks and I think it just gives off this 3D effect really and just really makes it stand out and then again working on the eye we work on the dark colours uh, the shadows in his eyes, his pupil would make it really dark and again as we get towards the eyebrow and the forehead would make it really light again and work up with them lighter skin colours and here as you can see we're just at them um, getting these parts together now so the forehead now we're joining in with the middle of the eyebrow we join to the lower part of his eye to the nearer the nose and yeah it's all just about joining them in and making sure you use similar colours and just make sure that they work well together so they don't look like really patchy and just so they look out of place and then here we're just working on uh, the lower part of his eye and go on to the top of his forehead where his hair is start on that dark part of his hair and the hairline and then yeah we're just working on the dark part of the hair and the it will look into like light greens and light browns and light greys to give off like the lighting part effect on his hair and then we use dark greens dark browns black to show off the shadows and the dark parts of his hair and it does really give it this like 3d effect of like a flowing effect as well because Farkas hair is like brushed to the side so we use when we're using the colors and we're drawing the shapes to make sure the shapes are quite thin and go uh, big from the left and then thinner towards the right to give off that effect of the hair being brushed to the side and we just join these light colours together and making sure we get a few dark colours in there to give off like, you know, the realistic hair effects that we're going for. And then here I'm using a light grey um, at the top of Farkas hair because again on the photos like the outline of his hair looks a very light grey and a lot of the reference photos I was looking for. So yeah, I just do that basically and get the dark colours um, near, the, near his ear, make sure they're all dark around his ear and around his hairline. And then the top part of his head and this part here where uh, we're working on like bringing all the hair together I make sure that part is quite a bit lighter just because I think that's it makes it look best in that way and um, drawing these lighter colours around the darker colours really just give off the effect of you know, hair flowing to the side. As you can see I've used loads of different colours here. I've used yellows, greens, browns, very dull purples and eventually it'll just give off that realistic hair look. So if you do hair like all one colour but just make them darker and lighter it doesn't really look like hair and it looks very two dimensional but by drawing these shapes and using loads of different colours we can make the hair look a little bit more realistic. And here I'm just working on uh, the tracksuit Farkas wearing. This was pretty easy I must admit. It's just a few dark blues and a few light blues and as long as you put them in the right places it'll look fine. And yeah, it covers half of his face. I wanted to start on this part first, so then I knew which parts of the face were being covered before going on to his beard and the rest of his face. Um, but like I said, for um, Farkas hair, we're going to be doing the same thing for the beard. I'm using lots of different colours to make it not look too dimensional. So as you can see, I'm using like pinks, greens, greys, even, like, even a few purples and black, just to make sure his facial hair looks as realistic as we possibly can. Um, because, like I said with the hair, if you just use one colour, like if you just used grey but made it darker and lighter in areas, 
it still wouldn't look very good, it would look very two dimensional but if you use different colours it makes it look more realistic and the individual hairs work well together and they're fitting together. So there we have just finished Daniel Farker and also my apologies if, um, if Joe and Farker flash on and off the screen sometimes, um, it's just because when I'm drawing the portraits I'm drawing them from behind Joe so every now and then I uh, hide Joe's layer and hide Farker's layer just so I can see uh, what I'm drawing for the other portrait which is the one that we're moving on to now and it is Marcelo Bielsa. So Marcelo Bielsa is fairly easy to draw for me because he is someone that I've drawn multiple times uh, because he's such an inspiration to me as a Leeds fan and in my opinion he's the greatest person I've seen step inside Ellen Road since I've been watching football so I've drawn him multiple times and it's quite easy for me to do this because I'm very familiar with the structure of his face, with the skin colour, with the shading. So yeah, I tried to work on a piece that I haven't really, uh, a picture of Bielsa that I haven't really worked on before, of him looking to the side like Farker is. And yeah, this is actually quite challenging to do with the glasses because at first they look like slanted and they look way too big to like fit on its face, but eventually when we fill in the glasses here and then fill in the parts around his face and start working on a little bit of his eye that is revealed under the glasses you can then see actually the glasses do are meant to look like that and they do fit really well but here like I did with Farka I'm working on the light colours towards the bridge of his nose and his mouth and then as I'm getting onto the left hand side into the darker areas like his neck and uh, near his ear and under his eyes I am using like purples and dark browns and dark pinks um, just to again make his skin colour not all be one colour but just to make it look all like realistic and different and yeah I think it worked out really well and like I say I'm working on the eyebrow here and the eye and quite a lot of the eye is hidden so it wasn't too difficult to draw the eyebrows and the eyes here and again drawing the um, forehead I used a light colour on the right hand side and used all these light colours and pushed them towards the left when we were working into the darker colours and like I have done with the portraits above Joe and Farker, here that I'm just filling in the rest of his face, making sure that near his uh, chin and that neck area is dark, and I push these dark colours into lighter colours, and then making sure on the glasses again we get the shadows right, and I actually did a little bit of an effect um, under his eye of the glasses, uh, like the actual glass part, I tried to make it like it was shiny onto the left hand side of his face, just again to make it look a little bit more realistic, to make it look a little bit different and with the hair it's exactly the same as we did with Farka we just go from light uh, we go from dark to light on the sides and the bottom and then the top area of his hair we go from light to dark as that is just the best way to draw hair in my opinion it makes it look the best and um, it, again it just doesn't look realistic if you don't do the light bits at the top it'll just look two dimensional no matter how much detail you put into these side areas if the top is too dark it just won't look right in my opinion. And now that the hair is pretty much almost done we're working on the wrinkles on Bielsa's forehead. We just do uh, the wrinkle like a dark colour and then gradually get lighter and lighter and then dark where his eyebrows are and then lighter and lighter towards the top of his head and just like that we have finished the full piece. And as you could see there, I was messing around with a few colours for the background. I was trying to use traditional Leech Knight colours. But in the end, I think um, this kind of dark purple, dark blue that I've got for here works the best in my opinion. I think it really helps uh, Bielsa and Farka stand out with the light reflections on the sides of the faces and the top of the hair. And also helps Joe pop out on this piece, which I think, which is what I was going for from the start. And this is how the final peak looks once framed. So I am really happy with how this turned out. And I want to thank Joe for uh, allowing me to do this piece of art for him. And I hope we'll be getting his reaction to this soon. And I'll upload another video uh, whenever Joe does react to this art. Hopefully, uh, when it's sent out to him, he'll be able to make like, a little video for me or take a photo of it or something. Which is what I'm hoping for. But we'll see what happens. And once again, uh, thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe if you did enjoy today's video. And I'll see you soon.